Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, taking a look at a way too early 2024 NFL mock draft from Chris Trapasso of CBS Sports, really just getting a feel for what kind of prospects we have our eyes on heading into the 2023 season and into the 2024 NFL draft. And before we even get into it again, I just want to say thank you to you guys. If you're watching NFL draft videos right now, you're about it. This The NFL draft is something that I absolutely love. It's a 12-month thing for me. And so if you guys do enjoy it, consider subscribing to the channel. We really do appreciate all the support you guys have shown, whether it's the NFL draft, whether it's high school recruiting, where kind of the NFL draft um, evaluation phase kind of starts. Like a lot of these guys were guys I've talked about in the 2021 class, in the 2021, 2020 class coming out of high school. And so, again, just appreciate all the support. Uh, we'll have our early position rankings coming out in about a month. So so stay tuned to that. But, again, just appreciate all the support. You all know I love the NFL draft. And, again, if you're watching the NFL draft videos right now and, and it's, what, late May, you guys are about it. Let me know in the comment section, too, how you guys feel about these prospects. Without further ado, though, let's get into it. And we're talking about the number one prospect in the NFL draft right away in Caleb Williams. Not many holes in his game. I mean, he is a special, special talent. And quite frankly, I don't think there's many teams that would pass on the opportunity to take Caleb Williams, even the Arizona Cardinals. When you have the chance to get, I mean, a, a true future Hall of Famer, or I mean, as bona fide as it gets. And we haven't really seen a quarterback prospect, what, since Trevor Lawrence? That's the, as special as Caleb Williams is. When you watch his film, like the off-schedule throws, the different arm angles he can throw from, the athleticism to kind of just make something out of nothing, kind of like what Patrick Mahomes does, just that feel of the of the game. It, it is truly special. There's not a lot to dislike about Caleb Williams. 80 touchdowns to, what, nine interceptions in his first two years of college football. Truly a special quarterback prospect. Comfortably my quarterback one. And then you're talking about probably the next best quarter or uh, draft prospect in the 2024 NFL draft in Marvin Harrison Jr., who – Checks every single box there is to check for a wide receiver. Size, check. Speed, check. Body control is probably the, the, the most special thing about Marvin Harrison Jr.'s game. When that football is in the air, I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr. is coming down with it. That's what he specializes in is kind of those contested catches, jump ball situations. But also, he, he's faster than the cornerbacks that are trying to cover him. He's bigger than the cornerbacks trying to cover him. He's quite frankly just more athletic. He's being coached by one of the best developers of wide receivers in Brian Harlan at Ohio State. If the Arizona Cardinals have the ability to take Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. in back-to-back -back picks, that might be one of the more special quarterback wide receiver duos we've seen in a long time. And if those guys play 10, 15 years together, I, I really do think we're talking about true two future Hall of Famers. Pick three, we got Olu Fashanu going off the board to the Colts. I'm going to stress a little less about the, the position fit because, again, position needs are going to change throughout the next 11, 10 months. I want to talk more about the prospects. Olu Fashanu is my offensive tackle too early on. I like Joe Alt from Notre Dame better, but Olu Fashanu probably top 15 pick in 2023's NFL draft if he decided to come back. Um, Very, very good athlete. He's very, very strong. A lot to like about Olu Fashanu's game. I think he's kind of a future um, – a future left tackle for a long time in the NFL. And then Drake, man, this is kind of what I want to talk about the most is how these quarterbacks stack up. Cause you got some young quarterbacks like Caleb Williams and Drake may who are special. You have some guys who are kind of trending up Quinn Ewers, JJ McCarthy. And then you have some veteran guys, Bo Nix and Michael Penix jr. Kind of interested to hear what you guys think in the comment section about how you stack these quarterbacks. I think most people really like Caleb Williams as QB one. I think Drake May is kind of solidified as QB2 as of right now. And then I'm kind of interested to see kind of where you guys have some of these quarterbacks. I'll throw out some names throughout the video as well, guys, that I'm keeping an eye on in the 2023 draft or the 2023 season heading up into the 2024 NFL draft. But Drake May, um, you watch him and we bet on UNC a lot last year. It's, it's truly incredible. He is a very good processor. He's extremely accurate to football. He's a phenomenal athlete. Uh, there's not a lot to dislike. I think Caleb Williams might just have a higher ceiling just in terms of the playmaking ability. But Drake May, in a lot of years, I think is quarterback one. Uh, you talk about Drake May being in this draft last year. You're talking about him, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, kind of battling it out as that quarterback one prospect. Pick five. This is an interesting one. I haven't seen it yet. Like I've watched some film with Trop Robinson from Penn State. I'm not quite there on him as a top 10 pick. 
I think he can certainly put it together, but this is kind of a first projection. We saw the, the first four picks were kind of guys that, yeah, those are pretty much some of the top prospects in this NFL draft. Chop Robinson, phenomenal burst off the line of scrimmage. He's very, very bendy. I think he has that play strength to go right through, guys. You just want to see it a little bit more. The production wasn't necessarily what it needed to be. You saw flashes of Chop Robinson. I didn't think you saw the consistency yet to be a top five pick. That being said, that's what year three is for in the college football level. The first two years are, okay, the flashes. This guy has some juice. Now I want to see it on a down-to-down basis. If Chop Robinson can do that and turn those flashes into some more consistency, I think you're going to see Chop Robinson coming off the board pretty darn early in the 2024 NFL draft. And quite frankly, Dallas Turner, a very similar prospect. Good bend, good burst off the line of scrimmage. Didn't get enough credit for how good he was because he was playing opposite Will Anderson. But another really good edge defender, and you see JTT, too, from Ohio State. I don't get the disrespect about Jared Verse. Jared Verse would have been my second edge off the board last year just behind Will Anderson. I don't know why you were projecting guys like JT, Dallas Turner, and Chop Robinson to be better than a guy like Jared Verse, who I had as a top 10 pick before he decided to go back to Florida State. And We'll talk a little bit more about Jared Verse, but I, I just think he's getting a little overlooked in this draft in, in, in this in the sense that like some of these younger players who are a little less proven, like Jared Verse, you know what you have. Jared Verse is a better prospect than all of these guys right now, so you're seeing some projections here. But JTT, a little bit of a different style than Dallas Turner and Chop Robinson, much more of a heavy-handed um, uh, hand-in-the-ground type as a defender who has more power in his hands to go through tackles than the burst and bend around tackles. I That kind of depends on what defensive coordinators and defensive line coaches kind of covet and, and favor. Like you see the Buffalo Bills, my team, much more of a, I want the heavy handed guy who's going to go right through tackles, set a good edge in the run game. And then you'll see some other defensive coordinators say, Hey, I want the bendy bursty guy who can win with speed. and attacking that outside shoulder of tackles. So like, where JT com- comes off the board versus Chop Robinson and Dallas Turner, I really do think kind of depends on, as of right now, what you kind of want in your edge defender. Leonard Taylor, here's another big-time projection, and I'm for it. I'm all with Leonard Taylor potentially being a top 15 pick. He's a guy that we talked a lot about as, as, a, as a kid coming out of high school. Goes to Miami, has been banged up. Like you, I really thought we'd see a breakout year as a sophomore because you saw the flashes as a freshman. He's been hurt. He took the spring off. If he is fully healthy and ready to kind of dominate, he could be a guy that's a top 10 dude. But taking a look at my board, like don't forget about Mason Smith from LSU. He's the guy that missed all of his sophomore season with the torn ACL. But you talk about special, special traits from some interior defense alignment. Mason, uh, Mason Smith from LSU is a guy that I think should be on a lot of people's boards. Omeka Buka coming off as wide receiver too. I like it. I mean, Emeka Buka is a guy that, again, I just don't think gets enough credit for how good he is. We've had some listeners say, like, hey, you're sleeping on Emeka. And I, quite frankly, I went back and watched. I think you might be right. Emeka Buka is a stud. He was a stud out of high school. He's been a stud at Ohio State. If he kind of continues his progression of his career, like he's going to be a, he's going to be a guy that comes off the board early, especially with how NFL teams value that wide receiver position. You're talking about some wide receivers that I'd kind of talk about who are battling Emeka out for that wide receiver number two. I think Xavier Worthy from Texas is a guy that just has that speed. Malik Neighbors put together a phenomenal season. Troy Franklin is a guy from Oregon that I really like as well. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is kind of locked in as that wide receiver one prospect. I don't really see that changing, barring something insane. And then that wide receiver two through wide receiver five is is kind of up to up for grabs with a lot of those wide receivers that I just mentioned. Brock Bowers, comfortably tight end one. I just don't know where he'll go in the draft. Movement skills are off the chart um, with running, running after the catch off the chart. He's, I mean, the best tight end prospect we've seen since Kyle Pitts. I just wonder if teams are going to shy away from taking Brock Bowers as a top five pick because we saw Kyle Pitts maybe kind of leave some, some meat on the bone in terms of his first couple of years. But if Kyle Pitts has a good season for the Falcons in year three, I think he, that would help Brock Bowers stock in terms of being like one of the more coveted tight ends we've seen from the college football level, like what he's done in his first two years at Georgia, truly, truly special. This is where I want to talk. Like I want to get into this quarterback room and I, you can take two different approaches to evaluating your quarterbacks right now. And, and as of right now, Michael Penix jr, probably the next best quarterback prospect 
He has the arm to make all the throws. He goes through his progressions. I think he's in a quarterback-friendly system with Kalen DeVoer, who also helped Jay Kaner kind of become a draft pick at Fresno State. I think Michael Penix's draft stock has a lot to do with Quinn Ewers, J.J. McCarthy. You could even throw in Cameron Ward from Washington State. There are some guys who I think, those guys who I kind of listed, Shadur Sanders from Colorado, you could throw in there too, as if J.J. Quinn Ewers plays really well, I think those guys jump Michael Penix Jr. But if Michael Penix Jr. just picks up where he left off at Washington last year, you're talking about quarterback three here if J.J. and Quinn Ewers don't necessarily take that next step. But I think this quarterback and how the how this quarterback position stacks up has a lot to do with how these, these year three quarterbacks play in terms of being NFL draft picks. Kool-Aid McKinstry, my cornerback one. I love Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think he's going to be a top five, top 10 pick. He's special movement skills, special length, special ball skills. I, I comfortably cornerback one. Kalen King is on his tail, but Kool-Aid McKinstry, um, he was a phenomenal prospect coming out of high school with everything you wanted. He's developed in terms of technique. Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be a guy that is going to be going early. And J.C. Latham, I'm – I'm interested to see if he um, moves over to left tackle for Alabama this year. I'm played right tackle. He's played good. Was a former top three national recruit tackle that was been built in the lab. 6'6", 326. He's a good athlete. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with if he stays at right tackle, our team's going to like kind of knock him down boards because we don't know if he can play left tackle. We'll see. You saw Darnell Wright go top 10 last, uh, last draft to the Bears, even though he's probably going to play right tackle in the NFL. So J.C. Latham is a guy that – um, definitely keep on your board. I don't know where Joe Alt's going, but once Joe Alt comes, like we'll talk about my offensive tackle one. Mason Smith already talked about him. You don't see many guys that are as lean, 6'5, 300 pounds. The play strength is there. Kind of Brian Brazy. It's actually kind of freaky how similar their career paths have been. Like, really flashed as true freshmen, which is rare to see true freshmen flash in the trenches because it kind of maybe takes a year to kind of get that body right for college football. Um, Brian Brazee did it. Mason Smith did it. Then they both got hurt in year two. We didn't really see Brian Brazee recover as cleanly as you would have liked. If Mason Smith can recover from that injury and, and be kind of the, the force on the inside that he was as a true freshman, I think you're seeing Mason Smith come off the board in the top 15. Bo Nick. So the, I mean, the Chris Trapasso here is pretty clearly kind of favoring the quarterbacks that have already put it on the field. Bo Nix was a guy that I was super high on coming into last year. Cause you saw it at Auburn. He's a former five-star quarterback. You know, he's got the traits. He's a good athlete. He has a good arm, horrible wide receiver play, horrible offensive play calling, horrible offensive line. They couldn't run the football at Auburn. That's a bad recipe for a quarterback in the SEC to be successful. He goes to Oregon where all that's different, has good wide receiver play, has a phenomenal offensive coordinator in Kenny, Kenny Dillingham, very good offensive line and run game. And then you saw Bo Nix look as good as you've ever seen him in the last four years of college football. Bo Nix is a guy that I expect to be phenomenal this year. And again, it has a lot to do with guys like Quinn Ewers and how does Quinn Ewers look in year three? Because if Quinn Ewers puts it together, you're talking about Quinn Ewers being the quarterback three of this class and maybe even pushing Drake May for that quarterback too because Quinn Ewers has all the arm talent in the world, can throw from all sorts of angles. Wouldn't say he's the athlete that some of these guys are in in terms of extending plays, but Holy smokes, if you watched him out of high school, like that arm talent is different. You just haven't seen it on the field. Like Quinn Ewers was grossly inconsistent as a as a starter last year for Texas. If he puts it together, though, you're talking about Quinn Ewers potentially being a top 10 pick. And whether we like it or not, like NFL scouts really do care about how you were evaluated out of high school. Like they put a lot of time into evaluating these high school arms in terms of weeding through who has the most special arm. Quinn Ewers was pretty comfortably the most special arm in that 2021 class. And so we'll see how Quint Ewers stacks up when, when, when after year three here. Joe Alt coming off the board. He's my offensive tackle one. Holy, uh, Joe Alt, the size, the movement skills, the power off the line of scrimmage, the ability to pass for tech. He's so, he's so, so good. And so Joe Alt's a guy that I think is going to be a top 10 pick, maybe even top five. I think he's the best offensive tackle in this class right now. Cooper Beebe, I – Cooper Beebe's going to have to have a special, special year on the inside and and if he wants to be a top 10 or top top first round pick, I should say. Because you you see teams are not going to draft interior offensive linemen in the top 20 if they're not going to be like special, like Zach Martin special. So if Cooper Beebe can show that he could be like that type of special, I, I could see him being a first round pick. 
I see him more as a day two pick right now. One of the best interior offensive linemen in this class was going to be my second best interior offensive lineman in the 2023 NFL draft before he declared before he came back to Kansas State. But I mean, really, really solid. I just don't know how much he's going to help his stock because I don't see him putting together much better of a season than he did in 2022. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. This linebacker class is good, You're like much, much better in terms of off ball linebackers um, this year than it was last year. I watched a lot of Trenton Simpson film. Jeremiah Trotter from Clemson was the was the dude at Clemson last year. And so Utah, I'm I'm pulling up my linebacker rankings right now. There's some good line. Like Jeremiah Trotter Jr., Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State, um, Junior Colson from Michigan's another name that I would kind of keep an eye on. These off-ball linebackers are big, they're fast, and, and they're true off-ball linebackers, which is something that you just didn't really see in 2023. And so outside of Jack Campbell, who ended up going in the first round of Detroit, which was a little bit of a reach. Um, you're seeing some more true off-ball linebackers in this class, and I, I would be very surprised if we don't see one of these guys in the first round. Jazart Newton um, from Illinois, another guy that probably would have been a day-two pick had, had he declared early or had he declared in 2023. I Again, he's very similar to like Bo Nix and Michael Penix. So you take a look at the interior defensive line spot. I think a lot of it has to do with how guys like Leonard Taylor, Demond Payne from uh, Alabama, Michael Hall from Ohio State. How do those guys look? Because if they put together truly special seasons, which they certainly could, then Newton's getting pushed down because I don't know if Newton has those special traits that a Leonard Taylor or Mason Smith has. But if Jazan Newton just kind of puts together what he did last year and then Mason Smith and Leonard Taylor maybe don't take that step, you could be looking at the number one interior defense alignment in the class. And that's Kind of how it goes is that it, doing mock drafts this early is a lot of how are you balancing the projection of these prospects going into year three versus like the veteran guys who you know what you have and they're going to be solid next year as well. Zion Nelson is very interesting. If you guys have been kind of following us when we were back, like no one's listening to us. Zion Nelson was a guy that we thought was going to be a top 10 pick. He started as a true freshman against Florida when he was like 285 pounds. It, he put on some weight. He looked really good. And in year three, you're saying, like, if he kind of puts it together, he's going to be a first-round tackle. Does not put it together. And then it struggles with injuries in year four. Coming into year five, I still, like, the, the, the special movement skills of Zion Nelson are still there. If he can clean up the injuries, I you could be looking at a first-round pick, but now he is kind of a year five guy as opposed to a year three guy. Um, we'll see where Zion Nelson comes off the board. I, I'm kind of... I, I like Zion Nelson. I'm not going to lie. But for me, the ship might have sailed a little bit. First running back off the board, Rocket Sanders. I love Rocket Sanders. I'm going to pull up my running back rankings because Rocket Sanders is awfully, awfully high in terms of guys that I really like. I just, I'm more of a Trey Van Henderson guy, more of a Blake Corum guy, Braylon Allen. I This running back class is really good. Like you talk about Braylon Allen, Trey Van Henderson, Will Shipley from Clemson's high up there, Blake Corum. It's a really, really good group. Rocket Sanders is really good. I mean, he's 6'2", 225 pounds, has played wide receiver, so he's phenomenal out of the backfield, can run between the tackles, has the has the straight line speed to, to kind of hit the home run play. I this is I this is not ooh, as I hit my mic here. This is not an indictment on Rocket Sanders as much as it's I just like Travion Henderson. I like Blake Corm a little bit more. Jared Verse, my guy, finally coming off the board at pick 23. He's going to be a top 10 pick. I don't I don't see why you have him as a top 10 pick in the 2023 NFL draft. He goes back for another year. I, he's the best edge prospect in this class for me. He was the second best last year, only next to Will Anderson. Jared Verse is special, and I think you could still see some improvement because you remember – he transferred him from SUNY Albany, an FCS school. This was his first year playing Power 5 level football at Florida State. was absolutely dominant. You give him another year in that Florida State strength and conditioning room, I, Jared Verse is, is going to be a guy to watch. I think he's one of the best players in this draft. Michael Hall is kind of like a Kalijah Cansey prospect where he's like a little short, a little undersized, but extremely disruptive, extremely good penetrator, uses his hands very well. But that first step, like a lot of interior offensive linemen can't keep up with that first step. So you're you're going to hear the knock, just like you did with Kalaja Kansi on, can he translate to the NFL? Because he's a little bit small to play on that inside. But man, if you turn on the film, Michael Hall, is a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a disruptor. He, he's kind of a um, game wrecker. Cooper DeGene. Uh, Riley Moss was a guy I was high on last year. Cooper DeGene, um, cornerback from Iowa, very athletic, good ball skills. I 
I, I'm a Kalen King guy, like t- pulling up my cornerback rankings. I, I'm not Cooper DeGene. I like him. I just don't, I, to be fair, haven't like studied the tape. This is a lot more of just like what I've seen from watching probably too much college football. But I mean, Kalen King, Denzel Burke, Tony Grimes from Texas a and the transfer. Like those are some guys that I think could be really special. Cooper Jean, though, very, very good for him. Cameron Kitchens, probably one of the better safety prospects in this class. Um, yeah, I I could get with this. I mean, it kind of depends on what corner, what kind of cornerback you want. I think Kalen Bullock from USC is really good. Um, if you want more of a box guy, I think Malachi Moore is very similar to what Brian Branch is, also an Alabama kid. So we'll see kind of what you want at that safety spot. But Cameron Kitchens, a ball hawk, a good athlete. Lots to like about his game. Xavier Worthy, um, Worthy, I should say. I, he's a guy that elite speed, he has great movement skills. He's extremely undersized. And that's, you're going to see the same conversation you saw with Devonta Smith, with Tank Dell, with Jordan Addison. Can Xavier Worthy deal with physical press cornerbacks? And maybe kind of how Devonta Smith worked out is, is good for him. How does Jordan Addison work out in year one? Might be kind of, might kind of persuade NFL teams to say, yeah, he is a little undersized. And he's, he's a guy that I don't think is going to put on weight. But you see a lot of these NFL draft analysts say he's got to put on weight. That's just his body type. That's how he plays football. I mean, that's just who he is. He's an undersized guy with elite movement skills, very, very good burners, tracks the ball downfield extremely well. Xavier Worthy and Quinn Ewers have the ability to really bolster up their draft stock with very good seasons for Texas. Because you are looking at one of the best quarterback wide receiver duos in, in the whole entire country. Kingsley Su- Sumatia. Former Oregon commit, transfers to BYU. I remember him coming out of high school. He's a guy that a, a very similar to a lot of these tackles. We can actually talk about both of these guys in tandem. Two guys that were highly coveted tackles out of high school, built in a lab. And you know how they kind of evaluate these high school tackles or how can we, have, how can we project them to playing high-level college and high-level NFL football. There's a reason both of these guys were five-star offensive tackle prospects out of high school. They were built in labs, like 6'6", 6'7", 325 plus pounds. They're big dudes, but they're also athletic. I'm a little bit higher on Amarius Mims because I I just, I think he's a phenomenal athlete for being 6'7", 330. And we're going to see him play, I hope, left tackle for Georgia. You saw him play tackle a little bit because he, I mean, played guard most thing. War McClendon um, and Roger Jones on the tackles for Georgia. You didn't see much of Amarius Mims. He actually put his name in the portal. He waited his turn. He's going to be a starting tackle for Georgia, and he's a guy that if he put, he only needs one year to put it together. NFL teams, you do not need to twist NFL teams' arms that hard to convince them that a Marius Mims is going to be a good football player in the NFL level. So he puts together a solid season for Georgia. We're talking about a Marius Mims as a top twenty pick in the NFL draft. Last two picks to round it out. Two really intriguing edge rushers. Braylon Trice. I was surprised he came back. I think he's kind of in the Jared verse. Um, Boat of Washington and Florida State could be really special in college football, so they come back. Braylon Trice was an absolute menace, especially in the first six games of the season. Like, this dude has power to go through tackles. He has the speed and burst to go around tackles. An older prospect, but again, you talk about a, if we're just evaluating prospects right now, I think behind Jared Verse is probably going to be Braylon Trice. And then you have JT. You have some of those Dallas Turner from Alabama. But Braylon Trice. The film that he put on, I mean, truly special. And then Liatu Latu, another guy that was a former Washington Husky. Man, I would love. Man, if you had Braylon Trice, ZTF, and Liatu Latu at Washington, that is a scary pass rush. Transfers to UCLA, He was he's going to have an injury red flag. He medically retired from football, honestly, kind of very similar to Jalen Phillips' story, who was UCLA to Miami. Um, comes back. He, he's another edge guy that kind of built in the lab. 6'4", 265, extremely productive in the pass rush. His pass rush win rate was like 25 plus percent. This dude just wins on the outside. This one would make a lot of sense. And then to round it out, Tyleek Williams, who's playing next to Michael Hall at Ohio State. Um, you have him who's more of a space heater, who's a good athlete for 320 pounds, but not as quick off the ball as Michael Hall. I think that hurts him. Like when I'm watching Michael Hall's get off, it's like, oh, Tyler Williams is slow off the ball. No, he's just next to probably the best first step on the inside in this draft class. But Tyler Williams is another guy that I think you could be talking about as a first round draft pick if he puts it together this year. Um, no JJ McCarthy, which is interesting. Spencer Rattler could be another quarterback that you could see in first round drafts. I'm interested to hear your guys' takes on this quarterback situation because you have a, a very weird. Uh, 
not weird, interesting group of quarterbacks. You have some Caleb Williams and Jake May, the bona fide guys. And then you have like Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., Spencer Rattler, kind of some older prospects who are talented. And then you have some younger prospects, J.J. McCarthy, Quinn Ewers, Cameron Ward, who are also extremely talented but not yet proven yet. I'm interested to see how this quarterback um, position kind of shakes out for the 2024 NFL draft because I think that's going to kind of set this draft up, if you will, with how many quarterbacks are the top 10, top five level picks. So, again, wanted to hop on, talk about some prospects we haven't already talked about. Appreciate the support you guys are showing. Again, if you do enjoy it, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later.